tried and tested one RM warm up, five reps at 70%, three reps at 80%, and so on. So let me let me know what you guys think. What what how how would you would you usually build up to say say for instance you're going for a deadlift PB, like how, how would you build up? Say you've got half an hour to build up to your top set. What would you do? So let me let me know in the comments. So what I would do would be. And I'd work at whatever the, the the target, say, top set is of the day. So say, for instance, like I'm going for a 90% single on exercise X. Then I'd work, work backwards, or say I'm going for 95%. So I'd work backwards from that. I would work, like, say, for instance, like... Oh, you, so Byron did it this week. So, well, t t tell us your strategy, what, what you did. So I, I, was, I was looking at, like, if... Every 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 rep over ninety percent is really really costly on it. Specific more specifically on on like strength exercises and what I mean by strength exercises I mean like say powerlifting style stuff you know where you, where there's like maximum exertion for a, for a longer period of time compared to like an explosive lift where you you might just be doing the the. Um, you, you might just be doing the concentric, you know, like say on a jerk, for instance. If, if somebody's done it, if you say, Kian, you, you imagine you've done like a split jerk, say a 130 or something, and you catch it right, and it actually feels, and then you dump it. Well, it actually feels easy, doesn't it? It's, you're, not, you're not actually grinding. So in terms of fatigue, like you can afford to go a little bit heavier on the, on the, on the overhead stuff in terms of warm-ups and working at higher percentages, providing, and this is a, a, a big thing, providing that, I would definitely recommend like in comps or when you're building up to a max, like eliminate the eccentric as much as you can. So like any overheads, make sure you can dump it. You don't want to be accumulating eccentric fatigue because that's where you you kind of get getting the getting the fatigue from. Because um, if you think about it, you do like see even like an explosive push press or whatever. You do like a power clean and a push press, and you catch it right, and you're not grinding at lockout. It actually feels easy. Like if you do power clean, push press, even up to like ninety percent or whatever. So that's why you might you might find that you can actually if you do work like this you might actually find that you can accumulate more volume at higher percentages on stuff like overhead lifts on stuff like say bag throw think about think about bag throw for instance it's concentric only so you as soon as you release it and finish the extension you've released it and you're not under tension anymore so you're not having to lower it down to the ground even stuff like say um say sprints prowler sprints um sled drags like even like truck pull simulation and stuff you will be able to go pretty heavy on that and the and, and actually even though that it feels like it, you, you're really exerting yourself at the time and you might be getting out of breath, you'll actually be able to work at a higher percentage and recover better because you're not, like say for instance, you're doing a, doing a truck pull or whatever and you, you just get to the point where you, like you, there's, no, there's no eccentric fatigue. So what I mean by that simple way is put, like you don't need to put the brakes on. Whereas if you think about you're doing like say squats or deadlifts or bench or strict press or something like that, the, the, the tension that you're having to create whilst doing the eccentric, is really, really, and, and that kind of like global neural stimulation that you're having to get, like, is is, me, is mega intense and uh, and really fatigues you. So that that's why I would be I would get really confident and skilled in taking bigger jumps on the say on the stuff where there's an eccentric when you're warming up, so stuff like deadlift, squats, and stuff like that. I'd be thinking that every anything over ninety percent is really, really costly. So say you're going for a PB at comp. Like say for instance you wanted to say say for instance you wanted to pull three hundred at a comp in a, in like a powerlifting comp. This was a, a question that I had the, the other day for someone someone who was competing at the the deadlift championships and he wanted to finish on like two eighty two eighty five and he was and he was thinking right second lift go two seventy five opener go two sixty five and then I explained to him that say over the like say anything over ninety percent is is really really costly so working backwards from say the two eighty. Ideally, I wouldn't be going over two fifty two point five for someone finishing on a two eighty, or say, Kian, in, in your uh, you're finishing on three hundred at OSG, your last warm up, two seventy single, or e even if you get better before say OSG, uh, taking bigger jumps and you know like say say if you were confident in terms of skill at, at you know hitting eighty eight percent of your target, that's gonna so if you're confident with your technique and you can take those those bigger jumps, you're going to get rewarded with kind of that that saving more kind of neural like accumulating less neural fatigue, if you will. Whereas you'll find that new newer lifters and more novice lifters feel like they need to go at slightly higher percentages of the max. So because it's like a it's like a it's like a tug of war between building confidence and actually accumulating fatigue. So. 
So that, that, that's what you'll find. So, so as you as you become as you become more advanced with your lifting, I would definitely get aim to get more confident with bigger jumps. As you get, as you gain more experience and you're more confident with your technique, you'll see see, see some guys like Andy Bolton, for instance. I'm sure like he'd, he'd take like seemingly huge jumps, like 50 kilo jumps in the in the in the in warm ups up to like say high 300s. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a skill. Um, so it's deadlift. I don't really think about percentages. Do a standard 10 reps at 60 every session, just to get moving, feeling okay through the movement. Yeah, spot on. That that's what I would do. I'd, I'd do you work with your, like say, the the lighter work says a lot of people start with sixty, a lot of people start with seventy. You know, like twenty, twenty five plate, twenty plate either either side on deadlift, for instance. So it's the right height, and then almost use that to iron out kind of. That will find your. This is another thing. What you use the warm up for? We'll take use the deadlift for example. Like using um, you're using those lighter weights, so say sixty kilos for a set of ten, to find your most optimal position on that day. So this is something that I learned from doing like say a high frequency phase where I was deadlifting every day or whatever for a, a, like a prolonged period of time. And what I, what I found was that depending on like say the, the work that I've done over the course of uh, the training weeks, I found that, found that my, my optimal deadlift start position changed um, every single day subtly. So say for instance, I've been doing stuff where I've been doing say some squatting after the light deadlifts, for instance, like a squat session or a lower body intense session. I might find that my leg leg drive is actually really fatigued the next day. So then, I, on that day, I might be more inclined to to find that find a position that that actually with start with a, a bit of a higher hip and maybe maybe more slight, slight flexion at the at the upper spine. And then I might have days where I say I don't know like the weekend off and my legs are fresh and feeling good and I might be able to get like a slightly lower hip position, more kind of flat flatter back, and feel like I've got plenty of leg drive. So my point is like like obviously you can kind of project this and predict this and with programming but sometimes it's like it's inexplicable like how you feel like how often do you guys feel like when you sometimes you train and you might even be going to the gym you might be feeling great and then you go to warm up and you're like oh my, oh my goodness like, i can't even get in a good, good position like um and then other times you, you might actually feel like oh i feel really really fatigued and then you go to the gym not hoping for much and, and like the weights move really good. Has anybody experienced this? Like let me know in the comments like if you've if if you've experienced this. Um so my point is that you need to explore every single time that you that you're in there. Um and you can do this, this is a perfect way, doing your doing your sets of ten or whatever, doing your sets of five in your in your case, Kieran. Um and just use that to kind of get to kind of gauge. What 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 I usually do is I usually use the one twenty range to do maybe. I, I'll often do like say if I'm doing like a big deadlift session, like I'll, I'll use like one twenty ish or one twenty to one forty, and I'll do like say sets of five, maybe three sets of five, exploring slight different subtle differences in position. It might be like uh, foot width. It might be how how turned out my feet are. It might be how low my hips are. And th this is a big thing that I, su I suppose like what I've just said that I've never seen. I've never seen actually written down to be honest. I've never read it anyway. It's just something that I've experienced um, where that where your where your ideal position does change from day to day. So actually um, using these really light weights, going back to what we said before, where you're kind of almost getting some free training in that's not costly because it's not a, not costing you anything from your nervous system, and then and then ramping it up. So yeah, doing something like Ian says about doing a few sets of five up to sixty percent, then triples, doubles. Topping out between 85 and 90%. Yeah, great. So what I would say with this, because everybody is so different. So I can, I can even imagine, like, say, Byron and uh, Kian here warming up. And what I would do, like, if I was if I was coaching you to, you two in person to build up to a one rapper, like, I actually think that I'd get I'd get Byron to do a lot more work where he's building confidence doing, let's say, the 10s. And I think that would get key in actually just getting his eye in with the with with, with lower volume stuff um, because I do do feel that say say how heavy are you, are you Byron like eighty ninety or something I do I do feel like something that I've experienced through training as a one hundred and seventeen kilo guy training as a hundred kilo guy training as a ninety kilo guy training as an eighty five kilo guy I've noticed that these different body weights that say my, my um, my strategy would change and um, optimal strategy would change like when it, like I'd be a lot more kind of sparing with the work done when I'm uh, when I was heavier because you don't want to go over that lip of oh my goodness I feel I feel, feel really fatigued now um, whereas you might actually find like as a lighter weight and I've noticed that as, a, as I've got lighter and when I'm at when I'm when I'm at light when I'm say 
say, say my comp weight, I've competed under 80, under 90, like, I actually feel loads better the more work I do at, like, say, the specific comp distances. They, like, at my, at my last couple of comps, pe people w w look at me like I'm weird because I'm doing seemingly so much more work than anybody else in the warm-ups. Um, but the truth is, like, I, I know my data, and I know that if I'm doing, say, three or four, three to five moderate sets in training, I know that the sets always get, get better as they go along. So... Um, so yeah, my, like the, the overriding point is that t take ownership, um, make, like make, make notes of uh, your, your individual performances and, um, and 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 see what's optimal for you. But be careful about that. Use the lighter weights. Use the thirty to fifty percent range to dial in that technique and get your most ideal position on each day. And just be really, really careful at getting a cro get, getting close to that ninety percent mark. Um, so yeah, let's use the 300, 300 kilo um, example. If I if I was going for three hundred kilo, I would do two seventy as my last warm up. I would do two forty as the one before that. Do two twenty for a single, two hundred for a single. Maybe what one one seventy for a triple, and then like quite a bit of work at the one twenty to one forty range, like finding my optimal position.